with me as always is Jeff, producer. Hey everybody. And we are back to the 1980s, which some would argue is the best time ever. And most interesting time for hockey. Not a great time for the Winnipeg Jets, though. No. Not very well. At least we had a terrible years. first season. Yep, uh, pretty much on par with the what actually happened historically. Uh, finished uh, second to last overall. Uh, we did have a nice draft. Uh, wound up getting both Paul Coffey and Dave Babich. Uh, Babich was actually the real Jets' uh, first pick that year. And uh, so we got Coffey on top of that. So we've got something to build on at least. And we had a decent start to this season. I'm just looking at the uh, schedule for the first and the results for the first few games. Uh, we actually wound up winning our first uh, two against uh, Washington and then there's an 80 score for you 11 to 7 against the Penguins but uh, things kind of have went south after that uh, we're 2-4-1 and one right now so we're just going to be we can see we've got the game against the Hawks coming up and then uh, starting on Halloween night the five game homestand uh, and I think before we get into this next game uh, it's on the 29th which is today uh, we're gonna take a couple of make a couple of roster changes, and if then if we'll see how that does. If this slide continues after that, uh, maybe it's time to do something a little bit more drastic. So what I'm gonna do right now is uh, sit down Bill Clement, who we picked up last year, had a decent year for us, but has not done much at all this year. You can see in the pop up here, he's played seven games, all of the games this season. Uh, he's minus ten so far. And uh, I'm going to put Thomas Steen in, who's uh, played a little bit for us last year, but I think he's still technically a rookie. And I think I will also sit uh, Dave Hoyda out, just for the sake of making a change. Put John Markell back in. And finally, uh, Craig Norwich out, and good old Barry Melrose back in. So we will see what the AI does with uh, those lines. I'm not going to tell it exactly what to do yet. And uh, we've got a game today. Well, just might as well watch that and see how it goes. And then uh, I think go from there. Uh, we may. I mean, Richard Bruders had a really rough start to the year. Uh, 6.59 goals against average out of the gate. Uh, not too good. Marcus Matson yeah, as the backup, has done a little bit better. But you can see he's still uh, two and a half stars. We're kind of hoping he might eventually evolve into a three-star guy. But he seems to have leveled off there. So we may be looking at... Uh, having to pick up either a backup or maybe somebody that can even split time with Bruder, who we, uh, we got him last season in a trade with the Islanders. But uh, let's head over to the game with the Hawks tonight. Whoops, what have I done wrong? Well, there's so many things we could do. Let the assistant set those up. Uh, don't see anything wild. Wow, that's don't like that one. I'm gonna switch Jurgen Pedersen around for Markel. Uh, Pedersen was our one of our free agent signing from Sweden this year, uh, and he was injured in the, you know, the preseason. hasn't done much so far, but I don't think that really merits sending him down to the fourth line. So let's go watch the Hawks game. Uh, but they're gonna start. Uh, looks like John. Yeah, it's interesting. John Casey's actually starting for the Hawks. Uh, he didn't uh, really play much in real life until uh, much later in the 80s. Uh, he was kind of one of those 26, 27 year old rookies that eventually gets a chance and did reasonably well for the Stars when he got in, but uh, he hadn't really played in the NHL at this point, so he's off to a better start to his, his career in this game. Uh, Hawks line up. Uh, oh, that's right, they, they picked up Bobby Smith in the trade in the hour with the. Uh, was that a trade or oh right for Tony Esposito in the off season? Yeah, that's yeah. right. They got him from Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, we have a statement from the chat. We have bets 7 says, "I understand you guys probably have a better use of your resources, but do you guys have a hotline I can call to discuss my addiction <laughs> with MHM two? No, but the more you talk about it, the better, and uh, tell all your friends. <laughs> yes, and you can come talk to us live here right now about it, and we will gladly listen." Okay, I'm just going to leave it on the scoring summary so we only see the goals for this, uh, and we'll keep an eye on the stats as the game as we get through. Do you the game. know what we realized previously, Jeff? Do you remember what we realized after the future Jets problem in the playoffs? 
Scoring uh, summary is not a good thing. <laughs> all right, yeah, that's because everything should be going full. That's that was just that was a complete freak occurrence. I'm I'm maintaining that now. We ran into a hot goalie. <laughs> Wasn't anything we can do about it. And looks like Britter is about Maybe. to give one in, and Jim Poplinski. Uh, I think they got him in the draft. Normally it would have been Calgary in real life, but uh, Hawks wind up picking him up. We had a five on three here. And Morris Lukovic gets one on the five on three to tie it up. Uh, at least we converted on that. That first line is doing great. Uh, I think Dave Christian had as uh, yeah, he had that eight point game uh, in that. I think that was that second game of the year that we had. So the first line's doing fine, and there we go. Coffee gets one, so we're up two to one. So maybe we're bouncing back a little bit here, and. We won't need to do anything too drastic yet. Although I think we still should probably take a look at that uh, goaltending situation. Yeah. And see if we can find something to help. Just while we're watching this game, um, if anybody's uh, interested, the thing I've been working on the last few days uh, for FHM3 is adjusting some of the line selection logics. So you're going to... I think what we're going to wind up doing is giving you a little bit in three, uh, you'll have a little bit more input into uh, what line you want to use in the, when you've got a face off in your offensive defensive zone, offensive or defensive zone, you're going to be able to have a little more uh, influence on which line gets a priority for going out in those situations. And uh, you'll be able to hopefully match lines to, uh, you'll be able to say, if you want, say your third line checking line on your opponent's top line, you'll be able to, indicate that preference too. So you're going to have uh, a lot more uh, direct influence on the tactics in, a, or, you know, in the line strategy without having to go in and, you know, manually ch uh, change every single player, which would be a little bit of annoy a little bit annoying. And uh, here we go, you know, typical 80s game here. 3-3 uh, three, three at the end of the first. So a nice, quiet, uh, low-scoring game here. Let that run and see him. Yeah, we're getting a shot again, as usual. Uh, the Hawks uh, were... No, it was the Stars that won the uh, Stanley Cup this year. The Hawks, I think, had a decent season yep. last year. Are we... Uh, is it showing up okay for everybody, or are we getting... Uh, some, somebody's having a little bit of problem, but I think yeah, that's no, okay. So I, can, I usually yeah, get a message or something when it's buffering at my end, so I don't think it's us. Yeah. Bets07 uh, says, I just got into the tactic side of the game and adjusting my lines and all that jazz. Yep, there should be a whole bunch more for you to do next year for the, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Now we'll be probably releasing a few more details on that hopefully soon, but uh, that's a lot of what I've been working on lately. And it looks like it's uh, calmed oh, well, down a little bit. See. Still 3-3 three, three, uh, getting towards the end of the third, but we got something going on here. And oh, it looks like it's a hawk, so Dave Hannon. Not another rebound, Bridger. And Larry Murphy, someone knocks it in. Of course. Hawks have sure turned over their roster in this game. That's, I mean, they would have been starting out with a real 79 roster, and Jim Poplinski's new. Although, I guess, well, I guess Poplinski and Murphy, those guys would have uh, been uh, draftees. Doug Wilson and Larry Murphy on defense. That's kind of a scary combination. Very scary, actually. And hopefully we can bounce back in the third, but I'm not really counting on it, although at least the, uh, defensively we've settled down a little and Berger is having an okay game. Uh, here we got something going here. Look, which see the first line again. And look which on the breakaway. No, that wasn't Lukowicz, mm -hmm. that was, was it Matty Hagman? Matty Hagman, yeah. Who asked us for a really stupid amount for renewing his contract. So we haven't done anything on that yet. We're going to have to take another talk to him again. And Willie Lindstrom makes it 5-4 to four for us. All righty. Bets adds, uh, I'm doing a sim with Tampa Bay right now, considering they're in an interesting situation with, con okay. with players' contracts endings this year and next. But it's nice to be rewarded when it's late game and I double shift my first line and they send the game to overtime. 
Yeah, it's going to be a fun uh, free agent season this year. I'm going to... Any bets on where Stamkos is going? I don't think he's. it's completely out of the, the line that he stays. And Hawks tie it up. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's probably where I would bet, but still wouldn't surprise me if he somebody made him a big offer and he went for it. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. Like, uh, to me, I don't see the appeal of him going to Toronto, which everyone yeah. seems to somehow... Detroit it could be possible if they can move uh, Datsuk's contract. Yeah, yeah. And looks Montreal. like it's finished 5-5, five, five, and since this is the 80s, it's a tie. We don't play any overtime and certainly no shootout. Well, let's take a look at how that uh, box score Looks just looking at our player summary here. Uh, Lukowicz, another big game, three points. Nice 84 player rating. Hagman had a very good one, so he's trying hard for that contract. Uh, other guy in the third line, Dave Christian, didn't do that much. So that's not surprising. Coffee having another strong game uh, as a rookie. Not too many obvious problems there. Face offs. Uh, Ron Wilson got. Yeah, Wilson Steen, we got killed pretty bad on those. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's going to happen at some point. And Berdur, 35 saves on 40 shots. Yeah, I'll deal with that. I can take that. But let's just have a... What does that do for us in the standings? So we're still in last place in the Smythe. Big six points. Uh, at least we're not last over on the league. But, that's a victory, uh, eh? Oh, I know what we need to do. Uh, we have we forgot about this last year. We've got a couple of scouts coming off of uh, their assignments. So I will have... We've got one guy, one guy excellent at both things. I think I'm going to... One guy just excellent at, at the uh, at potential. So I'm going to assign that uh, the uh, potential guy to the upcoming draft. Uh... I think I've got. Let's set him to quantity just so we get a good look at everybody because I think I've got uh, another scout set to quality right now, so he's going to cover the key guys first. And that's okay. And this guy, I can. I'm going to. I think I'm going to have him check through the free agent pool. So there's a few guys hanging around. Whoops, not that. Free agents. And. Uh, Looking for potential there too, and quantity. So I think there's still are one or two decent uh, three-star guys hanging around, or at least supposed three-star guys. We'll get a little bit of an evaluation of them. Um, Bets uh, 07 is asking if there's any plan to uh, add an option to send your scout to redo his previous assignment. Uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh, I seem to remember us talking about that at some point. Uh, that would be kind of handy too, just when you get the uh, announcement, because we've actually screwed it up in this game. I missed the announcement uh, a couple of at the end of last season and wound up not getting a lot of the guys in the draft scouted. So ideally, we could just work something into the news where you respond to that news item and uh, you send the guy back out to do exactly what he was doing before. And when's our next game? In yeah, a few days. Uh, a couple of days, yeah, well, now we start that home stand against uh, Pittsburgh. We had that uh, crazy blowout win where Christian got the eight points. Well, uh, Bet says when you have 20 to 30 scouts, it's sometimes hard to remember what yeah, scouting exactly. assignments Especially they were it's, on. it's not so bad when you're uh, running a team in a smaller league and you've only got three or four in historical mode, but uh, with a full blown NHL staff, uh, yeah, that, would, that really would uh, be a good ease of use thing. Good point. Well, I don't know if you need. 30 scouts. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's getting a little excessive. And what did I was... I was gonna, oh, well, actually, free agents, let's take a look and see if there's anything in any decent goalies out there before we consider trading for one. I don't think there were any hanging around the last time I looked, but... No, I don't believe there is. 
Uh, Gary Laskowski was kind of a one season wonder for the Kings around 83 or 84. Uh, and it's only two stars right now. He's got a three star potential. And uh, yeah, basically cast offs and uh, you guys. Oh, Ron Lestel. <laughs> he was actually a Jet. Did I ever tell a story about that guy? No, I don't think so. Uh, Lestel is from, uh, he played uh, Junior A in Kelowna for the old Buckaroos in the BC Junior Hockey League. And uh, it was, I mean, the first team I ever watched live, and he was actually my favorite player at one point. So uh, he goes up to the WHL. I'm going to just advance this to the next game. Uh, he goes up to the WHL to, uh, I think it was Saskatoon. Oops, and Pedersen's okay. injured. That's not good. Oops. And it's just a day to day, day, so I'm going to ignore that. He goes up to the WHL, has a decent career there, and I think he got drafted in a late round by the Jets. Uh, so, uh, lo and behold, a couple of years later, uh, he gets called to their head, and they get some injuries in goal. And they wind up uh, kind of calling Ron Lestel up, and it happens to be a game against my favorite team, the Canucks. So, my, you know, the, my favorite junior goalie ever, you know, the first favorite, first uh, junior player I ever really liked. This is going to make his NHL debut against uh, my team, the Canucks. Uh, Canucks wound up winning, I think it was 10-1. to It's <laughs> the last game he ever played in the NHL. <laughs> so it's kind of conflicting loyalties there. I get to see my team uh, have, I think that, that's still probably the biggest blowout win in Canucks history, but it uh, destroyed the career of a uh, guy I used to really like. <laughs> well, that happens every once in a while. And I'm going to watch this game against the Penguins because we had such a great game against them last time. I'm going to go with pretty much the same lineup uh, we did before. Pedersen uh, should be okay. It's just a minor injury. And hopefully we can repeat that. But I think uh, after this is over, we're going to take a look around, see if we can find a trading partner for a goalie that's in the three, three and a half star potential range. Well, I think uh, Minnesota's got a couple we could look, maybe look at. Anybody in particular in mind? Or? Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can figure out a trade for... Someone at some point. But they would add Jill Malosh. I'm trying to think of who else they would add in real life, but they probably got different ones, and naturally the Penguins score first. Jill Malosh is the one who I was looking at. They they traded for Tony Esposito right now. Actually, oh, right, right, so. right. Yeah, so they're... Yeah. After winning the cup, the cup then they trade for a goalie. Yeah, because that makes all the sense. <laughs> And we're off to a not so great start here. Two nothing. Five minutes into the first. Seems about right. It's actually a pretty decent lineup. Uh, Pittsburgh looks like they've put together. I'm kind of surprised we blew them out as badly as we did at the start of the year. Although we're ahead on shots, eleven to seven. Um, uh, Betts is asking if we should upload the uh, save of the game. Um, yeah, then that's not a bad idea. I think uh, I know I, I put it on Dropbox anyhow, so Adam can pick it up and uh, take a look at it before the game. So if we can figure out a way to somewhere to put it, uh, yeah, maybe we can do that. That word makes sense, Adam. Well, we could consider it. And two to one into the first, so we're hanging in there a little bit. Uh, maybe we can come back and tie this up. And it looks like we might be here. Nope, Pittsburgh picks it up. And Jack Valaket, uh, not sure how they got him, but makes it 3-1 to one for them. Like he had, had a pretty good, Valaket was pretty good in Toronto for a couple of years and then uh, got traded to Colorado and went downhill pretty fast after that. Well, it's not unsurprising at some mm -hmm. point. Some of those guys will. There's so many guys who went up and down and just kind of disappeared. Yeah, well, it's a, you know, the Toronto thing, too. They wasn't so bad back then, but uh, a lot of uh, times now you get like guys like Matt Stage and who they, the Leafs wind up putting on their 
second line for a while, and he has some 50-point seasons, and he looks great because he's getting all the play uh, playing time, but then he goes somewhere else and uh, winds up on the third or fourth line, and not so good. 3-2, bouncing back again. Looks like that first line is getting a ton of ice time. I'm just going to take a quick look at the box score to see how much you're getting played. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh no, it's not too bad. 15 minutes, 14. No, that's the uh, second line. That looks pretty reasonable actually. I'm not going to worry about that. And let's see what happens in the third, if we can get back. Uh, looks like we got a power play, and we didn't do anything on it, so that's not going to happen. At least the goaltending seems to be settling down a little bit, but it's not uh, getting destroyed like he was in that uh, little four or five game stretch after the initial winning streak. Well, that's going to happen at some point. And Ricky, who makes it four to do. Actually, I just found a trade that we absolutely should make. Uh -oh. I'll discuss it. <laughs> uh, that says plus you're in the second year. I don't know what uh, I don't have any clue about the 1980-81 Jets. That's why we're playing. Yep, but he also doesn't know any of the transactions around the league, so that's kind of a yeah. good point. It's a little, puts things into a little more context, because you're seeing a lot of guys here that, I mean, the, we've had a ton of turnover, and uh, even the Penguins I've seen, most of the guys on the ice right now are actual Penguins in real life, but they got Norm Rochefort in the draft, and he's playing uh, the goalies, Rob Hall Holland was, I think, their third stringer at this point in real life, and now we're falling apart, 6-2. Well, it's... One of these things when you're playing historical mode, you can kind of, you're going to change teams, but you get to learn a lot. As we explained, part of the reason why we, why we uh, took the Winnipeg Jets in both our future and past is because they are such an interesting franchise. In the future, they have a lot of good young players, so we're going to see if we can make them into a winner. But in the past, they were one of the worst teams ever, thanks to what the NHL did to the WHA teams that came in. Merger teams, and we lose this one, 6-3. Okay, time to look for a better or different goalie. So what's this uh, Minnesota we should check for goaltending, you said? Actually, I, I got to this trade, so tell me what you think. We trade Bill Nyrop to the Philadelphia Flyers, and we get Rick St. Croix and a second-round pick. That's not bad. Yeah, I'm looking at Philadelphia right now. St. Croix was... Uh, Pretty good goalie in real life. It looks like Phil Mir has pushed him down the uh, depth chart. Mir's hanging on a little longer than he actually did. I think Mir had been traded to Colorado by this point. Yeah. Uh, but he's still there. So say that again. It was St. Croix and... And a sec their second round pick in the next year's draft for Bill Nyrop. Yeah, that actually sounds a, like a fairly reasonable deal. Their well, second rounder, not our second rounder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Their second rounder, so. And we've got Nair up on the trading block, anyhow. And let's see if they take it in my game. Yeah, the scout thinks they'll take it. Let's. Bet says, "Do you have any strategies that you use when playing the game? An example for me, I find utility players like ones I can use on both forward and defense." Dustin Bufflin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm never big on those those kind of guys because I've seen it screwed up so much in Vancouver. Like, uh, who was it? That, I don't know when Vino was here. He had somebody <laughs> who liked to, it was a defense when he put on the third or fourth line. I can't remember who it was. So that soured me on that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Bet's ass. Back in the 80s, were draft picks traded around a lot? Um, yeah, fairly often. That's. Uh, don't think it's quite as much as I'd have to you know, check the numbers for sure. I don't think it's quite as much as they are right now. Are now, but oh since the salary cap came in, uh, you know, twelve years ago now, I guess it was, is really when you start seeing draft picks get moved more. Yeah, yeah. And that's just simply because uh, when teams like Chicago are dumping salaries, they don't want to take more salaries, so they'll 
you know, take a couple draft yeah. picks. Like they did again today, Tara Vinen and uh, Bickle yeah. are gone to Bickle. Carolina. For a second and a third. And that's a nice development report for us this week. Uh, a couple of the only guys that went downhill are a couple of minor leaguers and pretty nice across the board for development. Let's just take a look and make sure Matson hasn't finally evolved into a three star. Nope. Uh, we got a game tomorrow against Washington. Hopefully, we'll get a response back on that trade by that point. Okay. Well, apparently, St. Qua is only a two and a half star, though. But that's still maybe a win for us. Is that potential or is that uh... both? That's funny. It wasn't that bad. Of a goal. He had one really good year in real life in eighty eighty one uh, or eighty one. He's a goaltending coach now, right? So yeah, he is. I think he was. He had like a two point three something goals against average. I think one year, which is ridiculously low for the era. Yeah. Oh, here we go. We got a news item. No, it's just a board confidence update, uh, and the owner isn't happy with us, so that's not good. What is he going to do? Fire us? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Gonna make one little lineup switch. Uh, Mark Kilkin. Oh, I've got to make another one anyhow. I'm gonna sit Naira up out because I don't want Naira getting a trade, getting injured, and screwing up that trade before the Flyers have responded. Well, I'm gonna look and see if I can flip. St. Croix somewhere for a better goalie. Now that we have a sec an extra second round pick, we can throw a third round in to make things more interesting. And the lines look pretty reasonable so far. I really would like, yeah, like a three star guy as our backup. That's just too much of a drop off. Between Gross. from Berdur to Matson. Yeah, Capitals look pretty awful. Yeah, we actually won our home on our first game of the season against the Caps, so we should be able to win this, I hope. Fingers crossed. Uh, Bets07 oh, is asking if we've got a preference when it comes to shot handedness and. If it actually has an impact in the game, uh, not on actual shooting. I'd, I'd have to double check to be sure, but I think it uh, does have some effect in situations uh, where, like, when you've got a defenseman back at the point, if he's uh, got his stay, if he's if he shoots from the wrong side, he may have some issues uh, controlling the puck. Just nothing hugely significant, but uh, he'd probably be at a slight disadvantage. But yeah, I, I generally don't worry too much about that one. Setting the lineup and go for the best player available, or at least the best combination you can set up for two defensemen. I like the old uh, one offensive guy, one defensive guy, pair them together. And naturally, the Capitals are up one nothing at the end of the first. So this season is heading in much the same direction the last one did. Of course. Which other way would it go? Yep, although on the bright side, it's still another fairly strong draft coming up, so we can add another good guy. That's assuming we're not fired. Yeah, kind of a big assumption, but... <laughs> kind of wondering if maybe I should set that option at the start of the game not to allow us to get uh, get uh, fired. Well, even if we do get fired, we can rehire ourselves, right? True, true. It's kind of cheating, but uh, we have to, we will. And we tie it up. Looks like uh, it's a deep no, Hagman again. Oh, Hagman's pushing really hard for that big deal he wanted. Well, that's good. And I mean, we're we actually seem to be doing pretty well in this. Out winning faceoffs, out hitting them, out shooting them. Oh my God, is Jimmy Mann going to get a point? That seems unlikely. It bounced off a man and goes in. Jimmy Mann gets a goal. <laughs> of course it did. And the goon puts us up two to one. And cross your fingers. Hope we can hang on through the third. 
But yeah, this game is actually turning. I mean, Washington's a terrible team, so we shouldn't get too excited about the result. But uh, uh, yeah, see, naturally, as soon as I say they're a terrible team, they're going to score on us now. Gardner gets a goal. Of course. I mean, they were still pretty bad at this point. It wasn't, I mean, Gardner was one of the guys that came in, and they started building around them. Uh, Ryan Walter uh, then eventually got Rod Langway from Montreal, and that was what the uh, really good Capitals teams in the late 80s were built on. Three, two, fantastic. Uh, for the we've got a question about how effective enforcers are in the lineup. Uh, right now, the main effect is uh, on your team's morale. It won't really. I mean, I'm trying to remember exactly how it works. Yeah, I don't think it has any uh, direct impact on uh, whether or not your players get injured, for example. But uh, one of the things I'm looking, we're looking at doing for uh, the new. Uh, for FHM3 and the way tactics will work on that is uh, certain tactics will need certain types of players in the lineup. And I guess if you're you know playing a game in this era, the early 80s, you're going to be kind of obliged to have an enforcer in the lineup. If you don't, your team won't really execute quite as well. And it looks like we just went up 4-3. Well, that's not a bad thing. Oh, don't tell me we're going to blow it. Reg Thomas, career minor leaguer. Oh, Eddie Godin, even worse. Not sure Godin even actually made it to the NHL. Oh, he wouldn't. He, would, he must have got in for a few games, otherwise he wouldn't be in the database. And yet another tie. Checking the box score out. Melrose did not have a good game at all. I think we might have hurt ourselves by uh, taking Bill Nyra up out of there. And Dave Christian, another week one after having such a good start. Face off a little better. Pwog66 in the chat says, FHM3 needs to address the rare two goalie hurt situation. Just not allow two go goalie to finish game fix. Yeah, it's just a little uh, tricky to get it... Uh, Work that out the way the, the way the data structures work for. I mean, in, if it actually happened in uh, real life, you'd be able to put in the third string goalie. But uh, it's the question of how exactly to make it work in the game without uh, making things crash horribly. Or actually, or I mean, in some cases, you uh, know, there's times people have teams have even had to draft put a skater in as a goalie. But it can't actually work that way in the game right now, so it takes a little figuring to do in such a rare situation. It's not the super high priority, and yeah. and Richard yeah. Berger got here got hurt on top of that. Okay, well I think I got a trade. Did we make that first trade? Did it go through? Not yet. We're still waiting for a response back from the Flyers. Okay, if we do get it through, I got a trade to flip it. Great trade to flip it. But in the meantime. A bets 07 asks, speaking of morale, I'm currently struggling with a pair with a pair of players' happiness. They are fourth line players and I'm giving them slightly more than fourth line minutes and they refuse to be happy. It won't I'm take slowly... it won't the, the happiness change won't especially for uh, playing time can take a little bit of taking a little while to take effect because it's looking at the last few games. So if you've been you were giving them not enough uh, penalty, not enough uh, ice time for quite a while and then suddenly change it. You're not going to see the change after the first game. It's going to take probably two or three or even four games to for the numbers to rebalance and them to start being happier with the ice time again. And the Flyers did accept that trade. Okay. So let's yeah. pull the trigger on that and tell me what this great trade you got is. <laughs> so I picked up from Buffalo. We got a Serge Savard coming in. Who Actual was, jet you know, eventually. of course, the Winnipeg yeah. Jet. For uh, season after this, but goal still. Tender, yeah, goaltender Don Edwards. And then pick up uh, John Marks as a throw-in piece. Rick St. Croix, a third-round pick, and Brad Palmer and Norm Aubin. 
A lot of Continue young guys going the other way. We I may have a problem doing that in this game because Don Edwards has got a minor injury right now. But let's just throw it together and see what we get. Uh, said Edwards, Savard. Edwards, Savard, what was the other one? And Marks. John Marks, ex Blackhawk, yeah. who's on the trading block right now for them. Yeah. That was more just part of a balance piece for minutes. Um, Betts says at ads, they think they are second line minutes, but when I give them, they're giving me 30s and 40s in game rating. That could also depend on the yeah. situation they're being put in and the amount of time they're actually playing. I mean, uh, how much how much total minutes are they playing? Like, I mean, uh, Jeff and I have went into this on other ones, but for instance, in the future Jets ones, we have a fourth line set to playing roughly 10 minutes a game, but some guys are only play end up playing like three or four minutes, depending on how power plays and penalty kills are. So it can be very up and down on that. Is there a draft pick too in this deal? Sorry to interrupt thing. Yeah, and a third round pick from us. Our third rounder, okay. Yeah, because we have two second rounders, so we don't. Yeah, we're giving up a ton of young guys here for a couple of veterans, and uh, Edwards is only uh, Edwards is only 25. I thought he was older at this point. Big contract. No, let's the, let's see if we can the get The two it. young guys are only three star, not, or one guy's only going to be a two and a half star, and the other guy's only a three star. So. And we got a game against Calgary today and haven't gotten any uh, response back. I'm just going to sim through that and see what happens. Yet another tie. 2-2. Two -two. So we keep tying and the uh, scores keep going down. So uh, Brewers settle down a little bit. Nice game That's from Ron good. Wilson. Finally went uh, above 500 on faceoffs. Uh, Bet says, I try to get them at least 10 minutes regardless. Like when we're up three goals in the first, I like to double ship my fourth yeah. liners or up three goals in the third. You know, you're always going to have some guys unhappy because I always think they should be playing more minutes. Yeah, and if you've got, if you happen to have a really strong fourth line too, like guys who'd be playing uh, second line minutes on other teams in the league, they're they're not they're never really going to be happy with fourth line minutes. They're eventually going to get so unhappy that they're going to want to trade because they want to play a little bit more. So that may be part of the situation as well. Uh, too, too, man, can't complain too much about that tie. Let's see if we got a response back or if it's and yeah, see the Sabers shot me down for that deal. That's the right deal, Alfred. Yeah. Saint Croix, Alban, Palmer. And our third rounder for Edward Savard and John Marks. Sorry, say that one more time. I, it's, I'm behind a little bit. Yeah. Was... Uh, Rick St. Croix, I've got it on the screen yeah. right now. Norm Ben and Brad Palmer and our third rounder for 1981 yeah. for Edward yeah. Savard and John Marks. And they said no. Oh, shocking. Yeah, yeah, I guess they... Uh, Wonder so... off by how much. Yeah, can't be much. Anyhow, yeah, that's it. Probably a little bit yeah, looks like Melrose got himself ripped his, ripped up his ankle ligaments. So that's not great. Of course he did. Uh, I'm going to send Matson down and use St. Croix as my backup because I really suspect St. Croix is just on the fringe of getting that third star. Sure. So Matson goes to the reserve list. St. Croix gets dressed. Melrose. Uh, Three weeks, so I will put him on the injury list. And let's call somebody up here. And yeah, we've got a few young guys. Potential three stars. Mark Plandry, Anders Elderbring, Good old Claude Julien. In fact, Julien actually may be our best alternative here. We've got Lars Eric Schuberg, who's Maybe a little bit better at the moment, but he's 36 years old. And he's not going to get any better. So I think I will <laughs> give uh, Julien his first NHL game, see if he can have a better career than he actually did. Which was like, what, uh, I think a dozen games or so with the Nordiques. And I'll even throw him in the lineup to start out. Uh, Thomas Steen's been doing, us, doing okay for us. Uh, Oh, he does all right. 
Doug Smale's kind of off to a rough start, really down to minus 12 and 11 games. Scratch him, try... I'm going to switch more and put Bill Clement back into it. Let me just see what kind of lines the AI comes up with with that particular lineup. Steve on the fourth, that's okay. Peter Marsh gets double shifted. That's looking... maybe I'll put Wilson up to the second line, but other than that, it looks fairly reasonable to me. Yeah, I think so. We're cutting down Coffee's minutes a little bit, which is, makes some a bit of sense, because I think he's, yeah, he's still only two and a half stars at this point. Great offensively, but uh, you're not getting much defense with him. And tomorrow against Edmonton, I'll just finish today quickly. Bet says, do you mind checking the player awards from the previous year if you get a chance? Yeah, let me just uh, get through this one game against the Oilers. Let's see yeah. how the coffeeless Oilers do against the uh, Jets. With uh, well, how many how many Oilers we got in here? We got Coffee, we got Randy Gregg, uh, Matty Hagman. So who have they replaced those guys with? Uh, looks like it's most. They haven't done a whole lot with their lineup, actually. Oh yeah, all these guys are. Pretty much. This is like the Oilers lineup from the previous season, pretty much. Yeah. Minus one, Clayton Patco. So, let's see. This is what it was like to play with to play against Gretzky in 1980. I saw way too much of this as a Canucks fan in the 80s. Hopefully he's reasonably merciful on us. I think the Oilers had a pretty good uh, season in the game last year, but they wound up going out in the playoffs fair, play, fairly early in the playoffs. And we're out shooting him early. That's nice. And looks like Matty Hagman's going to put us up on the power play. Or is it going to be Coffee? It's Coffee. Well, Coffee scores on the Oilers. As it should be. And Peterson chases his own dump in, cycles it around. And Jorgen Peterson, I think that might be his first NHL goal. Yep, first goal this season, and he's a rookie, so that's his first NHL goal. And we're somehow, wow, running away with it in the Oilers, 7 nothing on shots. Oh, it's not bad. Yeah, pretty happy with the start. Uh, surprised Gretzky hasn't done more to us so far, but maybe that's still coming. Oh, I'm sure it is. Gretzky. Yeah, 2 nothing into the first. Brewer seems to actually, be getting better in every game we... Uh... Oh, no, actually, this is St. Claude's first game, so... Pretty nice debut for him. In uh, another sim game I have going of the 80s Jets, Wayne Gretzky's on the team. And uh, recently, Bobby Orr just got traded from Chicago to Edmonton for... Uh, uh, who was it? Another longtime actual Chicago player. Tony Esposito, maybe? I think it was. It was just one of those funny things that just made you laugh. What year are you in? How long has Orr uh, lasted? That was 82, I think he was. Yeah, still see, going. That's, I mean, that's the thing with Orr. He got to retire when he was, what, 29, 30. If he had, if he had, had like a normal career length, he would have been playing into the mid late 80s, and he would have been there for that whole uh, high scoring era. Who knows how many points he would have finished with? Yeah, for sure. And how, who knows how much of an impact he would have on today's game. Yeah. Now, still had a pretty big one. I don't think there's really much of his. Paul Coffey isn't. Uh, probably doesn't come along with if Orr doesn't start uh, playing the way he did 10 years earlier. Well, for sure. But I mean, even you just talk in t terms of total points, like how many points Yeah. would he be number two to Gretzky? Would he be past Gretzky? No, nah, it wouldn't, so wouldn't have been quite that much, but I mean, it would have been ridiculous for the, if he had had a normal career, uh, the all-time defenseman scoring leader would have been not even... Maybe he would have been farther ahead than Gretzky is on points. And are we going to hang on here? 
I think we... No, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. It scared me for a second there. It hesitated with uh, about 10 seconds to go, and I thought they were going to tie it up. But we finally win one, and we do, against, do it against the Oilers. Excellent. I'm just going to take a quick look, and then I'll show you the uh, awards for the previous season. And Gretzky do... Uh, Gretzky had a good game, just didn't get any points. So we killed him on face-offs. So that's kind of nice. Uh, Hagman, another really nice game. Pretty good distribution. Claude Julien gets an assist in his first NHL game. Might be one more than he actually got in uh, his NHL career. Okay, uh, awards for last year, history, and that is the 79-81. So Gretzky got the uh, Ross, or the uh, that's the heart in the first column, and the Ross uh, finished with... 175 points, so it was about 30 more than he actually got in real life. Uh, Rod Langman, Montreal, got the uh, top plus minus award. Uh, Denny Potvin for the Norris, and uh, Brian Troche wound up w winning the Selkie, which I don't think he ever got in real life. Uh, goalie of the year was, yeah, that's yeah, that's I'm, I'm trying to remember how the Vezin the Vezina at this point was still going to the uh, goalie with the lowest or the two goalies on the team with the lowest goals against. But uh, in the game, it's the, this is the first column is effectively the Vezina, the modern Vezina. And then that save percentage is the Jennings, so Reggie Lemelin in uh, I think Calgary uh, won that. And the goals against award is the old version of the uh, Vezina. So uh, Chico Resch for the Islanders. And the remaining awards, uh, Gretzky gets Rookie of the Year, which he technically isn't uh, eligible for, and we're going to be changing the rookie eligibility rules uh, for the awards uh, in the next version of the game. Steve Payne uh, didn't point, playoff points didn't show up that odd. The Stars won the cup and Gretzky not surprisingly got the MVP. So that was the uh, award winners for the previous year and the uh, cup winner was the North Stars who upset the Islanders in the final. Which makes no sense. Well, I got lucky. Hot goalie. Still. And we're playing the Leafs today. And uh, see, at this point, we usually make fun of the Leafs, but they're off to a great start. And uh, they was it the modern game or was it this game where they beat us uh, eight nothing or eight to one? Uh, the modern game. Yeah. So. Cross your fingers that this doesn't happen. This, see, they're in the middle of the uh, Ballard years, but uh, Ballard isn't forcing them to trade away all their players in this game, so they're still hanging on to Sittler and McDonald and Williams. Yeah, there was this, yeah, the late 80s or late 70s Leafs were pretty good, uh, and then just fell apart when uh, Ballard did what he did to them. Yeah, not surprising. That's 1980 scoreline, 10 nothing. Uh, was, I mean, it wasn't that common, but uh, came up a lot more than it does now. Well, you saw 10 nothing now, you'd wonder what happened to the goalies. Mm -hmm. Or at least one of them. Or both. There was nobody in that. And in fact, that would actually be impressive if they only gave up. 10 goals if there was nobody in that. Well, unless they're playing the Canucks who seem to struggle to get 10 shots on the board some games these lately. <laughs> well, that happens. And we're up one nothing. so I started St. Croix again in this game, so I think that trade's working out even if he doesn't have the attribute and the ratings don't look that uh, great. He's Giving us pretty good results so far, and as soon as I say that, naturally he lets a goal in. Of now course. I should just shut up and not uh, comment <laughs> on when things are going well. Mm, low shot so far, 4-2, and we're more than halfway through the first. Uh, question from Betts, uh, when 
pulling goalie down the pulling goalie down by one goal setting is if it's very fast uh, what time would they come out of the net I think the North standard setting is 75 seconds so I think I'm not 100% positive I think very fast we'll take it down to 60 or no other way around 90 15 seconds up it's either 90 or two minutes one of the two of those And that's yet another thing we've been talking. I was talking to Sebastian today about adding to FHN3, uh, giving you some manual control over the goalies in, uh, or over when the goalie gets pulled at the end of the game. It'll still automatically happen on a delayed penalty, but uh, in a uh, when you want to get a goal at the end of the game, think about maybe having some option where you can specifically say, "Okay, I want to pull a goalie right at this moment," and press a button, and you have to. If there's a chance for him to leave the ice, he'll do that. And then a few other different tactical options where you'll actually be able to change things in the course of the game without having to go into the uh, tactics window and make super detailed changes like you do right now. And we are up 2-1 to one again, so yeah, we're beating teams. We've been 3-1. to one. So we seem to have turned around that little skid pretty nicely and have to take a look at the standings at the end of this one and see where we are. So I think we've picked it up a little bit now. Well, we couldn't be any worse, really. Right? Ah, we can always get worse. <laughs> you see, Leafs still have that uh, Tiger Williams, uh, Daryl Sittler, Lanny McDonald line intact, which is the one they had at the end of the 70s and was gone by this point in real life. Uh, or would have been, I think McDonald was up at this point, and then Williams would have been towards the end of the season, and Sittler halfway through the next one. Uh, well, we're getting shot. Let's see if we can hang on here. I'm going to take a look at their stats after this game, just see how everybody's doing so far this season. Come on, come on, hang on. 20 seconds, 10, and 0, and we win 3 to 2. Woohoo! So, getting out of that game and checking the standings, we have climbed out of last place in the Smythe. We're actually tied for with Colorado fourth out of the six, and the Blackhawks, apparently that Tony Esposito trade wasn't a good idea because they're 3, 10, and 2 and dead last in the division. And well, the, right. we're 15th out of 21 in the league. And are we actually in a playoff spot? We're one point, or well, Colorado and I and uh, us are tied for the last playoff spot. We've got a couple of games at hand, so technically we're ahead of them. Uh, let's just take a look at the team stats so far this year. Uh, Dave Christian, he's got half. Of, he's got 17 points, but half of those are in one game. So 12 and 12. Or, Nine points in 12 games other than that uh, hasn't been as quite as impressive as that looks. Coffee's off to a nice start. Ten points in his first 13 games. Where's Dave Babich? Oh, right down there. Eight, eight points in 12. And who's having trouble here? Clement has at least got a couple of points. He's in plus minus is still terrible. Coffee's, oh, Coffee's minus 14. And Jimmy Mann with his goal, 54 penalty minutes. Uh, Jurgen Pedersen isn't really doing as well as we expected him to. And chat question, would you rather fight for a final playoff spot and just miss it in the last few days or be eliminated earlier and get a better draft pick? Uh, depends if it's real life or in the game. If in, in the game, I will probably just go for the draft pick. In real life, uh... I mean, theoretically, I'd want the Canucks to get the better, you know, the way, especially considering where they are right now, to keep going with the rebuild and get the better pick. But it's tough to, if you're that close to the playoff, to say you don't want to see it. You don't, you don't want to see the team in the playoffs. And uh, Ryan Walter, and yeah, the Capitals are having a tough time already and just lost their captain. So are we well, done with this uh, homestand now? Is that the last game? Yeah, we're on the road 
for a couple of games back east, uh, Quebec and Boston. And that's three days from now. Let's see if we, we don't have any injuries at the moment, I don't think. I'm going to just let it play up to here, and I think I'll put Berdur back and go for this one since he played uh, seven or eight years in the WHA in Quebec. Uh, so it's returning back home for him. But we've been winning with this lineup otherwise, so I will stick with it. Yeah, it looks like the Nordiques got Pelly Lindbergh in the draft. That actually makes them into kind of an interesting team. Uh, they don't have the Stasnys yet. But Dale Hunter's on there. And sort of the WHA leftovers from Goulet. Defense is kind of a mess. Uh, yeah, we can beat these guys. I don't see why not. Radcast. Radcast doesn't, doesn't like coffee, huh? I wasn't ever really a big fan of uh, him when he was playing for the most part because he usually killed the Canucks and then he had that, I think that was that one, the game where he set, I think it was the record for is it points by a defenseman or assists by a defenseman in the game, and I had him in a hockey pool that year. So I've loved him ever since then. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Yeah. We seem to really settle down defensively in this game. In the last, uh, well, over the last couple of weeks or so. That one bad stretch, and uh, now we're going to actually get out of a period 0-0. Uh, zero, zero. First time I think that's happened today. Excellent. Yeah, pretty even game so far, halfway through the second, and still no score. Oh, pretty successful return to Quebec for Berdur. We're going to get something happening here, and don't tell me they're going to... Well, it's, there's three minutes left in the second. Real Kluche, Ravi Fatorek, Paul Baxter, Goulet, and... No, Goulet. Sure keeps it out. Something good. Yeah, see. They had, what, two or three good chances there and finally put one in. So that was so much for the yep. shutout. Maybe we can get that one back, though. Into the second down, one nothing. Seems like a pretty even game now. Uh, beating them on faceoffs, one shot advantage. This is a pretty nice road game for us. I just wish we could get a goal somewhere in here. Yeah. Not halfway through the third hasn't happened yet. Oh, okay, we got something going on here, but it looks like it may be Quebec. And Elaine Cote scores off the face-off. Checking forward and puts us down to nothing. Come on, at least break the shutout. Now it looks like we're going to do that here. Lukowicz misses a net, grabs his own uh, loose puck. And looks like we got a scramble in front, and Coffee gets it. Woohoo! Come on, one more. Tie it up, tie it up. Another question about preferences? Go ahead, Betts. <laughs> Would you rather head into overtime tied 0 0 or 8 to 8? That's a tough one. I'll go with the zero to zero. <laughs> so would I, because then at least you know your goalie's playing well. Yeah. <laughs> and this one finishes two to one for Quebec, although we did outshoot them 36-26. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the box score. 
Well, I guess it's been our hour two now, so. Oh yeah, we're coming up in that. Uh, gave a ton of ice time to the first line that game. Now let's let me get out of this, and I think we will just about cut it off there. Let me see where we are on the schedule. Uh, Bruins next tomorrow, so I'm actually just going to sim through that because uh, I've got a bad feeling about it. Of course. Oops, we got an injury. Oh, Julianne hurt himself. Three game NHL career, he bruised his ankle. So, we'll put Craig Norwich back in for this one. Quickly fix the lines. Gonna let Berdur play that one. And what happened? We got shut out 5 nothing by the Bruins. Not the greatest note to end the uh, broadcast on. No, not the worst either. So we are technically on. Looks like the Blackhawks uh, picked up a couple of points there and uh, passed us again. So we're technically tied for last in the Smythe now and probably out of a playoff spot, but at least we turned things around a little bit today. And then in a couple of weeks we can get back to what looks like another big road trip. Uh, we got the Canucks. Oh, home game against the Canadians. Always a big one. Yeah. We get to see Guy Lafleur next week. The Canadians who are currently 13-1-2. and two. <laughs> uh, Any bets on how that's going to turn out for us? Uh, terribly. I would say that's a pretty good guess. Okay, well, do we want to wrap it up there? Sure. Uh, thank you for tuning in to another friend stream. You can find our stream weekly on Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash OOTP developments. This stream will be archived on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash OOTP developments for your later viewing. You can find us on Twitter, which is at franchise. You can find us on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash franchise hockey manager. You can come to our website and talk all things franchise hockey or out of the park baseball or beyond the sidelines football at www.ootpdevelopments.com slash forums. Am I missing anything else, Jeff? Uh, I think you covered pretty much everything. We may have a couple of interesting new things coming up for you in the next uh, week or two. NHL draft uh, next Friday night. So that'll be interesting. Yes. We'll have to discuss quite a bit there. Yeah. And hopefully some uh, more news upcoming on FHM3 in the coming weeks. So I'll be able to let you a little bit know, 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 let you know a little bit more about what's going to be going on with that. But other than that, I think sure. we can uh, sign off here, and uh, we will be back next week with the modern version of the Jets, who are doing somewhat better than uh, the uh, earlier one, aside yes. from the unfortunate uh, early playoff exit. <laughs> well, it happens. Okay, and I will uh, cut it off there, and thanks for coming in, uh, coming out, everybody, and uh, we.